All right. Hey, welcome, y'all. I'm Jamie, and welcome to Deadbeat Studios. Today, we are going to be checking out two amplifiers from Dark Glass, the 210 of the, the Microtube series. And underneath this one, I'm sure you can't see it, but there's a, a 112 under there, too. We're going to check both of them out. Now, I do need to say that this is a unedited, long-form video on purpose, because Part of what I'm gonna to do today is just give you an honest representation of what the learning curve is and how long it takes to get this thing plugged in and get it sounding decent. And then also I wanna represent what it actually sounds like. I'm not gonna do any punches. I'm not gonna go back and fix anything. What I play is what it sounds like. So that being said, please cut me some slack. Show me some grace because I'm gonna say a lot of wrong things. I'm gonna make some mistakes. I'm gonna play a ton of wrong notes. All right, so just please show me some grace there. You can skip around just below the timeline. You can see all the chapters are laid out. So if you wanna jump right now to the slapping or the metal or whatever it is I end up doing with this, you can find all that just below. But here's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna unbox both of these, the, uh, the 210 and the, the 112. I'm gonna do what I call my first impression where I'm just gonna plug them in, twist them knobs and see what it does. See what I think it, you know, what the starting point should be. But then I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes uh, playing a bunch of different songs through it, different styles of music, and just kind of see how it handles, see what it does well, see if there's any place that it shines in particular. And then at the end, I'm going to give my feedback, my final thoughts after I've spent maybe hopefully an hour with both of these amps. But first, we got to unbox it. Around here, we do all of our unboxings with a machete. Because why wouldn't you, you know? Much, much safer that way. Much more on brand, I guess you could say. All right. Hey, I'm Jamie, by the way, in case we haven't met. Hi, Jamie Lewis. Nice to meet you. I'm a bass player with a recording studio and a YouTube channel. Instruction manual. Let's hold on to that. Right now, let's get this thing unboxed. There's the power cable. Okay, we got some styrofoam up top. Okay. Yep. Actually, I'm gonna take this down to the floor. Believe it or not, it's not that heavy. Come on. There we go. I had to hold the box down with my feet. All right, let me get this box out of the way. Let's come over. Okay, so that's what we're working with. Let me see. Does this angle right here show it better? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so. Here's what the side of it looks like. There we go. Pretty nice that uh, the top, uh, the grill cloth comes off pretty easily. It Velcros on and off. It'll help me later when I'm placing microphones and stuff. All right, that's what it looks like up on top. I've got a camera uh, over here. I'm going to place this on this side. One second. Okay. All right. So I'll come back to this angle in just a second uh, and we can explore with the top of it, but that's where it sits for now. So that right there is the 210. As you can hear, I'm a little bit out of breath. It's not that heavy. You know, I was able to handle it, but definitely, definitely not featherweight. I got one more box down here on the ground. Let me get this one open. This one, I got a feeling it's gonna be easier because it's got one less speaker in it. Where's the break? Come on. There we go. Right down the middle. All right. Okay, now I do want to say one thing about the owner's manual. Typically, got another power cable here. When I do these videos, I try not to look at the manual. I try to see how user-friendly it is. 
There you go. I'm able to pull this one out left-handed, one-handed. That wasn't bad at all. Um, as I was saying, I, I usually like to see how user-friendly the gear is. And in, in other words, like, imagine your amp breaks down on the gig. Like this microphone doesn't want to stay up right now. <laughs> all right, so imagine things start going wrong, and you're like, oh, no, what am I going to do? Right, so how intuitive is it? How long does it take you? How long does it take you to get to a point where it's like, okay, I can make sound with this. Your amp breaks, it didn't make it on the flight. Something went wrong and you've got like 10 minutes to dial this in. Well, I don't have time to go flipping through the owner's manual and how does the Bluetooth connect? So um, I'm not gonna ignore the manual. It's here in case I need it, but I'm gonna try to see how far I can get without using it, so uh, just to see how intuitive it is and how user-friendly it is. The other one had the grill cloth that came right off. This one does too. There we go, very nice, very classy. Classic design. All right, let's see what these things sound like. Okay, I'm actually going to flip-flop these. I had the 210 up on here. I'm gonna switch it and put the 112 here because I'm kind of short and it's just easier for me to lean over here and get to uh, get to the back of this, yeah, from, from this angle. So we do have both of them. I'll plug that one in later, or actually I'll talk about that in the next video. Hold on. Put this over here. Yeah. So let me just say this. Um, I have the infinity cabinets right over there. You can't see them, but they're right off screen. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on the infinity series. Today I'm doing the micro tubes and then I'm going to pit them against each other. I'll put both of them side by side and I'll plug the same signal chain into both of them. We'll dial them in and we'll see which of the amps kind of does what better or worse, I don't know, we'll find out. But um, I'll use the 210s for that. For this, I'm gonna use the, the 112 and the 210 just gonna kinda kick over there to the side. Before I plug it in, I just realized there's probably stuff here on the back that we're gonna need to see. Sorry, uh, I can't zoom in with the camera, but there's a handful of things over here that I'll point out to you. We're gonna need some of them. Number one is the XLR for the DI out. There's a pre and a post um, EQ. I'm going to assume that right now it's set for post, and if it's not, we'll fix it. This is for the impulse responses and the uh, the amp sims. We're going to leave that off, I think, but again, I'll check that in a second. We've also got an aux in, a return and a send, and a foot switch. We're not going to use any of those today, but that's cool. You can play your tracks through it. You get an effect send and return and a foot switch, which I'm not using, and also a speaker out or speak on output for another cabinet, and then a tweeter button to turn the tweeter on and off. I don't know which one we're gonna have for default, but uh, we'll just kind of play around with it at the beginning. I'm gonna say this also, uh, in the beginning, I'm gonna leave the, uh, the master volume all the way down. So we'll just start by monitoring through the headphones, and in a second, I will, um, you know, take a step back and listen to it in the room and see how loud it is and how full it is. But for now, let's just go ahead and stick with variables we can control, the ones in the ear, and I won't have to worry about placing a mic and mic technique, the type of microphone. There's so many variables that could affect it, uh, but if we just go DI, we don't have to pay attention to any of that stuff. So let's turn it on. Where's the power? Ah, there we go. Okay, we got two red lights. That's a good sign. Yeah, that's a mute switch, I think. Uh, I know some of these have a double switch. Okay, these ones have doubles. Um, the high mid goes between 1.5K and 3K, and then the low mid goes from 500 hertz or 1K. So that's cool. You can switch between the two. We got a bass, a level, the blend, and a drive. Those are for the distortion, I'm guessing. And that's the switch between one or two or three different distortion engines. And then there's a built-in compressor that doesn't push in. 
active or passive. So this amp already right off the bat, even though I'm going to do a comparison video between this and the Infinity, this has got less switches. So right off the bat, my first impression is if I had to pick just one for like to take on the road that's gonna work and I don't gotta worry about firmware updates or you know apps or Bluetooth or any, any of the other things, just like I know it's gonna work because I plug it in and I can trust it. Probably we're leaning towards this one, but let's hold off on making those final decisions. I need a strap. Oh, here it is. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just plug it in, see what it sounds like. And again, we are leaving off the volume and we're just gonna uh, go on the DI output. So first, let's see if I'm getting any signal with my bass. That's probably the most important thing. My cable is right. Oh, no, this is the one that's going to the amp from my tuner. And this is where I'm gonna plug my bass in. I think. Huzzah! Okay, I'm gonna pull the volume all the way down on the preamp on my recording interface. Okay, so there's the cabinet. Okay, so now it's pre preamp. So um, I, I hit the switch in the back. You'll notice none of these knobs are doing anything because it's sending just a dry signal. There we go. Let's gain it up. Something appropriate. This bass is uh, wide open. It's a uh, Aria Pro 2 SB700. I don't know if it's come out yet by the time this video goes live, but it's a very basic instrument. One pickup, volume and tone, and a switch that we might play with, we might not. But uh, it's gonna be a good test for this, for this amp. Okay, so let me gain that up a little bit more. Okay, so um, with the knobs all the way down, that's flat. So this is a boost only amp. Some amps, like you leave the knob up center and it's boost this way, cut that way. Everything's all the way down. And I don't feel a center detent or nothing. So let's just kind of start right there. We'll start with the three band preamp. jump to the bass knob. Adds a lot of gain, that's for sure. Look at that, I'm not even all the way up. Let's go all the way, let's see what happens. Turn down the gain. Yeah, that knob does what you want it to do, that's for sure. Uh, let's check out the mid-range knob. Uh, we got two of them. Here's 500. Here's 1K. I'll probably leave 500 all the way down. But if I do any boosting in the mid-range, it's just about always 1K. Let's add some more low end to that. The 1K is kind of the finger striking frequency. It's like that sound right there, the thud of your finger attacking the string. So a little boost there goes a long way. Let's check out the upper mid. Here's 1.5. 
Now it's 3K. Yeah, I'm using the 3K probably. It's too nasally for me. Let's cut 500. Let's crank the top end sizzle. Maybe a bit too much. I can back off that 3K because I'm doing such a lift, a shelf lift with that treble knob. Add more of that sizzle. Jamie's got to work on his slap, and let's pull out some more of that mid-range. Okay, uh, before I dive into the distortion, let's stick here with the slap tone, and uh, let's play around with that compressor. So you can see there's a red light there that turns on when it starts to really, really go. One knob compressors can be kind of finicky. Um, let's just see if it works on slap. In my opinion, sometimes compressors sound the best when they're barely doing anything. So what you don't want to see is this. See that red light is staying on? It's just bah, red light. It's probably going to sound best if it's just like flute, 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 barely flickering on and off. Keep an eye on that red light right there. It's not doing anything. There we go. Compressor off. Yeah, that's kind of the sweet spot right there. It also kind of lets me play a little lighter. I don't have to dig in as hard. Punchy, that's for sure. Um, let's go ahead and check out the, oh, you know what, before I do that, let me check. Okay, this, the impulse response switch in the back isn't doing anything. So this is fresh from the factory. It must not have any loaded on. Yeah, because this right here is the, uh, that's pre-fader. So that's without any of the EQ moves. And then this is processed. Yeah, and the impulse responses aren't turning off. I mean, turning on. Okay, let's play around with the drive a little bit. Uh, I'm assuming the level's got to be on. Okay, so level is for how much, how loud you are. Drive is the amount of drive you want to have. Blend all the way to the left is um, clean all the way to the right. 
I like having a blend for distortion because you lose a lot of the bottom end when you start playing really, really crunchy town. So backing it off a little bit. Bring some of that low end back and then I can just drive it harder. Now the distortion is off. So far I like this distortion engine. I'm going to turn the blend all the way over. To me that sounds like a much more usable distortion. Let's check out the next one. That's just a bit too much. I feel like I like that one more. I like them both, screw it. <laughs> uh, let's blend a little bit more of the DI in. Very responsive, very in-your-face, focused, in control. All the words, all the adjectives. I'm digging it. Let's play some songs. All right, so I'm going to dial in a tone that is appropriate for not this song, but this song right here. Kind of old school. Stacks, Motown, that type of vibe. But I'm going to see if I can't use the distortion engine also. Let's flatten out the EQ. Okay, I'm going to flatten out the EQ. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I did say I was going to check out the speaker cabinet. I'll do that after I play this next song. I totally forgot to do it. To do it in the last segment. So, let's beef up the low end. And by the way, this bass is totally flat. Tone and volume knob are all the way up. There's a switch that goes from single coil to split. That's where we're starting. Let's get that uh, 1K up. Not too nasally. Let's leave these guys flat. A little bit of that top end. I'm going to see what I can do. with that first distortion I liked. To just get it a little hot. Because believe it or not, listen to Stevie Wonder, listen to Motown, the bass is definitely overdriven. And a lot of those songs, not because they hit distortion pedals, but they were just uh, cranking through those consoles. I know Jamerson's headphones would actually control if he turned up his bass and his headphones, it went hotter to the whole entire board. So, here's clean. Let's crank the compressor a little bit more to get it nice and thumpy. towards the clean side. Let's see what that does. All the way clean. My 
the other distortion. Again, probably not perfectly appropriate for this song. But it's definitely... It definitely adds it a bit more of sustain, and it's just dirtier. Let's go for it. I'm going to record this one just in case I want to use it later. Let's see what we get. course that didn't record but that's okay i was still tweaking stuff um yeah not bad let me do one more pass through but i'm going to turn the distortion all the way off let's see if it bounces a little bit better we still have the compression on one more time That definitely sounded better, but I, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to give it a shot. You never know. It's, it's always fun to cross genres like that. Okay, um, let's turn off the bass. Okay, the mute switch doesn't seem to work. It's for the speaker only. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and ch test the speaker. I'm gonna take my headphones off. Let's hear that same exact tone 
but just coming out of this amp down here. All right, let's see what we get. That's at halfway point. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. That thing is plenty loud. Worry not. You don't need to worry about anything. Okay. I'm going to put my bass guitar down, but I'm still going to plug in to this amp. I'm just going to do the following songs reamp style. Give me one second to plug in this cable. Hold on. The cool thing about doing it this way is now what I can do is I can get over here and uh, I can just worry about dialing in the tone. And I don't have to worry about playing bass at the same time, you know. It's hard doing two things at once. So let me come over here to this one. Let me turn off the track. Let's just see, are we getting? Okay, good, bass is coming through. So this is a metal track. And I should be able to do this. Okay, so yeah, this is a clip that I recorded back in 2020 for a good friend of mine. Arnold Plays Guitar is his YouTube channel. Uh, but all I'm gonna do is set this to loop. Let me do that right now. If I can set this to loop, then I can just, actually I don't need to loop it and I'll just start it over. Okay, so I'm just gonna play around and dial in the tone and um, you know, see what happens. Your guess is as good as mine. I'll leave it on this screen so you can watch me play. Um. I definitely like this one better. Okay, this was really handy right here. Using the, um, what is that, the low mid knob to pull out that 500 and then boosting the 1.5K with this one. Yeah, I kind of had it opposite with the other channel, but that sounds really good. Yeah, just see that compressor is just turning on and off. That's what you want to see. All the way distorted. Not a lot of body to this bass anyways. Getting a bit more aggressive with the uh, with the distortion. Bass is all the way up. And you can hear how thin the bass is. Not bad. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the rest of the track. Let's uh, see how this tone balances with it. Cool, I think we're gonna like it. All right, let's hear it from the top.
Man, pretty metal. All right, so um, we did old school pop. We did thrash metal. Let's go ahead and try some pop that's got uh, that's playing with a pick. I'm pretty sure this is pick playing. Let me um, let me level this out really fast because I know this next bass is really hot. You can tell by how huge those waveforms are. Sorry, I was just blocking them. Uh, but yeah, so give me a second. I'm gonna level this out flat. Or at least start with the clean channel. There we go. Okay, compressor's off, so everything's flat. Let's hear what this one sounds like. No track, just bass. I'm going to pull up the gain a little bit. Okay, all right, so let me start playing around here. Oops. Oh, I definitely like this distortion better. Bring some of that 500 in, it almost gets synth bassy. Nice and dirty. Let's bring in some of the clean. I know it's going to get quieter. Hold on one second. pretty sweet all right now let me come over here and gain the whole thing up a little bit all right let's pull in the track and see what we get Oops. <laughs> That was a really fat tone. Um, th th that's one of my go-to tricks on those pop tracks, especially if I'm playing with a pick, is just to treat it like a guitar, tune down an octave, and just get dirty, nasty, and find like some ostinato pattern to play. Um, let's do one more. This time, let's dial in a slap tone. So I'm going to get rid of the... Oh, we didn't have compression on with that one either. Okay, we're going to pump the compressor on this song. Uh, let me mute the track. Let's get the bass playing. Okay, so here's where, st where we're starting out. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is gain it up. I lied. The first thing I'm going to do is kind of, I want to test the waters of how loud I'm going to push it. Then I want to gain it up. Cause if I gain it up too soon and then I start doing 10 DB of, of whatever increasing, it's going to blow up the, the preamp. So now I'm in a good spot where I can gain it up. Okay. So now let's check out what happens when, uh, when I dial in the compressor. Okay. Okay. 
There it is. So this bass is a softer output, but you can see that knob, the red light is really dancing now. Hey, I used to be able to slap. Not really. Let's see what happens just for the fun of it if I mess around with the overdrive at all. Definitely going to be this setting. That's pretty sweet. Dry. Totally wet. I didn't think I was going to like it, but the saturation is pretty nice. It uh, adds another layer of, of compression to it. Um, let me bring in the backing track. And let's see what we get from this one, right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do that one more time, but I wanna hear it without the overdrive. I'm impressed. This thing sounds really good, whether it was on the clean or just a little bit of saturation uh, from the distortion. And then, man, the compressor is the the, the total game changer. Uh, for a one-knob compressor, I'm impressed. Okay, so here is my final takeaway on the, the, the Microtubes version of the Combo 500 from Dark Glass. This thing kicks ass, dude. Um, obviously we only heard the 112, the 210 is right behind me and I'm going to pit those two. I'm going to pit that one against the infinity series, uh, in a, in another video coming up because here's the thing. I mean, both of these combos sounded great, but they're totally different, right? This is analog. It's stripped down in terms of like, uh, you know, it doesn't have an octaver. Um, I think there's a few other features missing from it. That one, I'm pointing over there as if you can see it. The Infinity definitely has more bells and whistles. And for me, I don't necessarily need those things. I need something that works. I turn it on and I don't have to think about it. So this was really easy to dial in for band EQ compressor. Just had to get it to where the light was blinking every once in a while. And I thought it sounded great. Uh, Overdrive, again, very simple to use, not a lot of bells and whistles, and it was plenty of loud. For a 112, plenty of volume. If I was playing live, I'd probably be plugging in the 210, and I'd leave this one here in the studio. But honestly, I was really impressed. I can't wait to do the comparison video, put them head to head, and see where they really, uh, which one really shines where. But for sure, um, 
for the simpler, simplified feature set, I'm really digging the micro tubes. Go ahead and check out the uh, link in the description if you want to go and try one out for yourself. Thanks again to Dark Glass for sending this over. And uh, anything else you need, just let me know in the comments. I'll get back to you. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.